If you're watching this video, it means that you have either started or are about to start your dissertation. And congratulations, it's, it's such an exciting project and such an exciting thing that you're about to do, even though I know you don't feel like that right now. Because what you probably feel like right now is that there's this huge task to achieve. There's this massive mountain in the distance, and you don't even know how you're going to get to the mountain, let alone how you're going to climb up it. But... What we're gonna do over the course of the next few videos is talk about how to make your dissertation manageable and how to make it achievable. And also we're gonna talk about how to make it fun because what's gonna happen at the end of your project is you are going to be an expert in something that very, very, very few people are experts in. And whatever your dissertation project is, whether you're doing a, a literature review, or whether you're doing an original piece of research, or maybe you're creating a business proposal, whatever it is, this is going to be something that is specific to you. And that is a beautiful journey to be on. It's rare. So few people have that. You're going to develop a relationship with your supervisor and you're going to get work specifically uh, discussions about your work. And this is something that we love, love, love to see. All of us that work in higher education, we love the dissertation supervision process. So you're about to start. And what we are going to do is we're going to break it down into some small manageable chunks. And you can be watching this, whether maybe you've had your supervisor allocated, maybe you haven't had your supervisor allocated yet. But this is all about making sure that you get the most from it. And the key arguments from the series of videos is going to be, a, that any dissertation can be seen as just a series of bits that you need to complete rather than this complete full project. And that B, the easiest way to get your higher marks and to achieve as, as good a marks as possible is to make sure that you've got a really clear argument, a really clear overview, and that you know exactly what the focus of your dissertation is. And if you can understand those two things, everything else is just a little technical skill. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the importance of little and often work. So let's get started. All right, so first things first, this sounds like a really obvious one, but find out your key milestones. And those key milestones at the most basic form, it is about finding out when your dates are. So when are your dates for submitting the proposal? Is there a deadline for submitting a first draft? Is there a deadline for submitting the final piece? What are they and get them written into your calendar? Ideally a big calendar that's on the wall and you can actually see where things are heading. But if not, you could just put it in a day-to-day in a -day one. You want to figure out those big milestones. And probably by now, if you're watching this, you are going to know when those deadlines are. But what we need to do from there is we need to start making it more specific. So thinking about what are the other milestones? Do your dissertation module leaders or seminar tutors, do they give suggestions on when you might complete certain aspects of it? your methodology chapter or your literature review or a particular theme of the analysis. Work out exactly when each constituent part needs to be created by, because as we will keep coming back to, a dissertation is only made up of particular bits. It's not like you just have to sit down in one night and write 8,000 words, 10,000 words or 15,000 words, however long your dissertation is. So break it down into those key parts and work out when is it that you actually either are being told to or are aiming to complete a particular task. The second thing you're going to do is allocate specific time per week that you are going to work on the dissertation. This means that every week you are going to work on that piece at the exact same time. So maybe you've got a free hour between three and four on a Monday and nine and 10 on a Wednesday. And maybe there are hours where you find yourself pr particularly productive normally. What you're gonna do in amongst your timetable of when your other modules are and when work is and when you're seeing family or seeing friends is that you're gonna timetable in at least a couple of hours per week to say this is just dissertation time. The reason for that is, is because what happens otherwise, and I am very good or very bad at doing this, is that I might have on my to-do list, okay, I've got to do this particular project. I've got to do my dissertation project. And when it gets to it on the day, I think, oh, 
you know what? I'm not really feeling very inspired to do it. I'll just I'll just push it until tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and I think, oh, I'm still, I'm still not really in the mood. And then before I know it, it's Friday and I haven't done anything that week. I'm great at doing that. So to get around that, what I say is it is unavoidable. Like going to that particular seminar that you have at two o'clock, you have to go there. It has to happen at that time. That's what you're going to do with your dissertation. You are going to timetable specific points where you're going to say, I am always going to do the work in that time. If you put aside even two hours a week, that means that you can get the work done in a little and often fashion. Obviously, it goes without saying that the best dissertations are ones that are written over a long period of time rather than people that try and condense it right until the last minute. Now, you can get the most out of it if you actually schedule that time in. But importantly, what we'd also like you to do is set yourself smart goals. Make sure that what you're going to achieve in that hour is really tangible, that you're actually going to get something out of it. So this is when we come back to the idea of breaking the dissertation down into particular chunks. So we've got our big mountain, we've got our overall our overall piece, and we've already divided it down into, let's say, OK, it needs an introduction, it needs a literature review, a methodology, an analysis, and a conclusion chapter. Well, now let's start breaking that down if we have those milestones that might be occurring every six weeks. Well, what do you need to do every week? In order to achieve that mini deadline that or that, that first little submission point, what do you actually need to do every week? Figure out your weekly tasks and then get even more specific and figure out what is going to happen in each of those hours. What that means is you're not going to be overwhelmed then in thinking, oh, I've got to do all of this thing. I've got to write the entire literature review. No, you don't. All you have to do is focus on what you're doing in that hour. It reminds me a bit of the Friends episode when uh, Chandler's about to get married to Monica and uh, he's really worried about it. And again, he's feeling really overwhelmed by it. So what Joey says is, well, let's just take it step by step. Let's put your suit on. Let's walk from here to the door. Let's walk from the door down the hallway. And because it's broken down into manageable bite-sized chunks, it means that we can feel that sense of satisfaction. We can tick it off our list and we can say, yes, I have actually achieved that. So the important thing is not just setting time aside, but also setting clear goals for what you actually want to achieve within that session. And examples of that could be things like um, you're going to uh, make notes on two papers, or it could be that you're going to find 15 papers in that particular hour, or you're going to refine your proposal, or you're going to transcribe an interview, or you're going to start structuring whatever it is it could be anything but just have some sort of goal and something that you want to achieve from it the other thing that you might want to do in that time is also consider invisible work and this invisible work might happen when you really are feeling massively uninspired that day. You just couldn't face doing the reading. You couldn't face doing something more conceptual. So what you're going to do when you're feeling like that is have a list of real technical tasks that might take a bit of time. They're quite mundane tasks, but that need to get achieved. So it could be things like organizing your references, making sure your notes from your dissertation lectures are all in order. It could be things like finding particular papers or organizing yourself. All of this is invisible work. It needs to happen, but we don't normally find the time maybe to do it, or maybe we let it all build up. So in those hours where you really don't want to do the conceptual elements, give yourself some time and give yourself some space to think about doing invisible work. But also don't procrastinate too much. Don't just have the invisible work as being the main thing that you do for the next four weeks. And you're just focused on focusing on your references and making sure that your fonts are all looking nice. It should be occasional and really just used as that backup for when your, your brain isn't quite in gear or the, the, the cogs aren't quite turning as you like. So have those invisible tasks as a backup. So that is our first video where we're going to be exploring the initial aspect of making sure that you can start your dissertation well. And this is all about just making yourself organized. It's about making sure that you know what your, your plans are for the future. It means that you're starting to break that dissertation down into little manageable pieces instead of just going for this one big chunk. It's lots of little bits. 
And then you're allocating specific tasks to specific weeks so that you can really achieve things on a day to day basis. And what will happen, you'll notice this very, very quickly after a few weeks. Um, what will happen is just by doing those jobs on a day to day basis, you'll notice that this dissertation starts to grow and grow and grow. And the best part is you weren't even thinking about the big picture. You were just focusing on getting your day to day stuff done. You were just focused on that minor little part. And what you have done is you've reduced the amount of decisions that you have to make in a day because you've got up and you've just said, I am doing my work at this time and this is what it is. So you are setting yourself the preparation work and you are the one that is able to tick that off your list and know that that is going to be contributing to your final project. So our first point is make sure that you break your task down and you break your dissertation down into little bits and allocate yourself specific time for it. And in the next video, we're going to be talking about how to make the most of your supervisory meeting. So this is if you haven't been allocated your supervisor or maybe you haven't just yet, then this is the way of thinking about how can you be most effective in your supervisory meeting. So make sure that you come back after the break and let's talk about supervisors.